All right, guys, going to make an application that shows communicating between one JFrame and another. So I'm just going to make a project. And call it JFrame Fun. Except that's not where you call it that. I always do that. So Java application next. I do not want a main class. I'm going to give it the name JFrame Fun. Finish it. All right, so down here, JFrame Fun. I'm going to add two JFrames. So right click on Source Packages, make a JFrame, and I'm going to call this one Main Dialog. Or how about just Main? Main Frame. Yeah. All right, then I'm going to make another one called Input Dialog. All right? So new JFrame form. Input DLG, short for input dialog. All right, so the input um, dialog, I'm just going to drag out a couple things. We're going to enter somebody's name. We're going to enter somebody's age, right? Let's give them some text fields to type into. I'm going to blank out the fields, then I'll have to stretch them out, right, just like normal. And I double clicked on it, but that's a common mistake. I don't care what it created, I don't care. I'm just going to go back to the designer, right click, change variable, no, not change the variable name, edit the text, stretch it back out because that always shrinks it down to minimum. All right, and the age, do the same thing. I'm going to edit the text, back it up, stretch it back out. All right, heck. Maybe I'll fill in a, a value of zero just so it has a valid value, right? All right. And an OK button. I mean, I guess we could also have a cancel button, but whatever. I'm just going to drag an OK button out. Edit the text of it. Call it OK. I'm going to right click it and change the variable name to something a little bit better than just J button one. So I'm going to call it J button OK. All right. So this is our input field where they're going to enter some data. I'm going to go back to mainframe now. Let's close these extra ones. Don't need these anymore. Prior lecture, huh? Alrighty. Mainframe. All it's going to have is, you know, a field, a label, anything, which is going to display the information that we get back from the other place. All right. So I'm going to edit the text, just blank it out. Well, maybe that was a mistake. I better undo that if it will let me. All right. All right. Got to leave that alone, All right? Or edit text and add a space so that it's not shrinking down. It's still shrunk down, All right? Maybe I should make it an input field or easier to deal with. Cut that text field. Right. Who cares what that says? So I'm going to delete that. Thought I already did. Delete it. You lost. All right. Wipe this one out. Edit the text. Backspace it. Stretch it back out. All right. Now we're going to put a button there that's going to launch the other one. Creative name get data. I'm going to change the variable name to J button get data. All right, so that I can have some kind of form, excuse me, some kind of object to pass around between the two things, I'm going to add another class to my package. Give it the creative name of data. Java class data. And all of this thing needs is a string name and an int age, right? We're just going to pass those things back between the two pieces of data. Okay. Excuse me, the two applications. 
So in the input dialog, I need one of these data pieces. I need a reference to a data piece. So I'm going to go over to source inside my input dialog, go up to the top here and add a data reference. Data, data. And then I'm going to make a method that allows the setting of that reference, right? Void set data, right? And it's going to take a data field, right? Data space data. This dot data equals data, right? And heck, why not a get data? I mean, not strictly necessary, but so it needs to be able to return a data. Return this dot data. Right. That is so the other, the main dialog can access it, right? It can set a field. So we're going to go back to mainframe source. I'm going to scroll up to the top. He also needs his own data, right? So let's just go ahead and make a new one of these, right? So we're going to need something that will update this field right here, excuse me, on the designer, this field right here with the results of the other dialog. So over here in the source, we're going to make a method called public void set or update display. There's one more thing that I need to do. And as a matter of fact, if I did this in a different way, I would not necessarily even have to be setting the data like, like I was. But I need to go back over here. And since our main application, I put that in the wrong place. I cannot believe I put that update display in the wrong place anyways. Nuke it. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the designer for both of them because then I get confused. All right, so here, I over in the other one, I need to create a reference to mainframe, which we don't have yet. So the name of that class is, in fact, like I said, mainframe. So in input dialog, I'm going to make a reference to mainframe. All right? Mainframe, mainframe, All right? Something silly like that. And let's make a set for that. We don't need a git for it. The mainframe is going to set a reference to itself so that this guy can call it as necessary when the OK button is pressed. Okay, so void set mainframe, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And this dot mainframe equals mainframe. Right. So the main dialog, the main frame, is going to set the data object so that it can be filled in, and it's going to set the main frame reference so that the dialog, the input dialog, can update, can call the update function we're about to write. Okay, so back over here, in our main frame source, right, that's where we are, void update mainframe or something like that and then based on the data we're going to set you know that text field so string s s equals you know input in, in quote or input age in quote plus age plus a comma name in quote plus name now, I did not do these right because these are part of the data, right? So data.age and data.name. And then we can set that text field that we created, whatever our control was. So, or controls, because you're obviously going to have more than one or you're going to be doing something with this stuff. J text field. All right. Dot set. Dot. 
set text to the text that we just built from our data object. Now we need the method that the OK button, not the OK button, that the get data button is going to access. So I'm just going to double click that. And since it puts me down at the bottom, I'm going to quick click back to the designer, double click it again. Oh, well, if you're going to be that way about it, I'll just scroll up. Where's my OK button? Excuse me, where's my get data button? Right there. Okay. So this guy needs to make a new input dialog. Input DLG, DLG equals new, input DLG, like that. Then it needs to set a reference to the data. So DLE, DLG dot set data to our data. DLG dot set, you know, mainframe to ourselves, right? So this. Now he's done enough. That's all he needs to do. No, he better show the dialog. DLG dot show. Now, honestly, the show method has a line to it, meaning it's deprecated or something like that. I haven't quite looked into why. DLG dot show. Right, like that. Oh, I guess it's going to take a true or false, but it's still crossed out. Okay, it's replaced by set visible. Fine. Set visible true. We want it to be visible. All right. That's enough for that button to do. Let's prove it by running it. Mainframe has got our main. Get data. Yeah, cool. It launched the other one. And then when they click OK, you know, it'll do its magic. And I didn't, cannot believe I closed that. Yes, I'm a nerd. I have discoveries, my wallpaper. All right, so dialog example, come back up here. Well, I guess they're already open. The input dialog designer, the OK button for that needs to grab those pieces of data, put them into the data object, and then call update fields, or up, whatever the update method is, in the other guy's class, and the other object. OK, so OK button performed. We need to get our data. So string s is equal to this dot I guess I just called them JTEX field one and JTEX field two. That's really lame. It should be, you know, name and age, but I, I can rename them right away. So this dot JTEX field one dot get text, right? Like that. Why not call that s name and string s age equals this dot j text field to dot get text right? And then if we use the function that I demonstrated a while back, integer dot to int, you know, and it takes a string to convert it. What is it going to do? It's going to use a try and a catch. We want to try the conversion. Integer i equals or in, new integer. Or I could actually I can just do this. Integer i equals integer dot parse int. Pass in our string, right? But if that generates an error. It's going to throw an exception, so catch exception. And in that case, it's going to return null. So the calling code is going to have to check to see if the integer that comes back is null. Excuse me, exception ex, whatever the exception is. Who cares what it is? Conversion exception. All right, but if it works successfully, then it gets to the next line, and we can return our integer. Now the reason we're using a wrapper class rather than a boring old int is so that we have the option of returning null. I do have the recorder going, don't I? That better. 
Yes. Yes. Great. Great. Okay. So we can use this toInt function down here. Right. We've gotten the name and the age. I'm going to rename these fields name and age. So instead of JTEX field one, I'm going to come up here, right click, choose refactor, rename, and call it JTEX field name. I'll do the same thing for the age. Excuse me, it scrolled down to somewhere that I didn't want to be. All right, just a moment. All right. So where was our button activation? Some down here. Okay. So J text field name. Well, that was kind of a pain, but I'm going to do it anyways. Change. Refactor. Rename. The other field to J text field age. Hope I didn't swap them. Refactor. Oh, and that time it kept it, but let's make sure I didn't get them wrong. I'm going to go to the designer, right click on that, change variable name. Yep, that's the name field. So the other one is definitely the age field. Change variable name, age. Okay, great. Click back on source. All right, so now we need to do that conversion to see if it works. So we're going to call to int, right? So integer i age equals to int s age, right? Just pass that string in because that's how we wrote it. But we better make sure that it's not botched, right? So if i age equals equals null because that's what it returns if it fails. If parsent returns an exception and it catches it and returns null, all right. So we have a problem if that happens and we're going to generate an error. We're going to show a message box. Message box dot show age is not a number. Try again, right. That's going to give me a warning and hopefully it'll fill it in. Offer me the chance to create a class, create a field. Okay, fine. I'm going to have to look up the proper syntax for that. Excuse me. All right, let's give it a go again. Java X dot swing dot J option, not opetition, option pane dot message box or is it show message box show message dialog mm, just say show message dialog all right great show message dialog null comma Age is not a number. Try again. We could pass in, you know, a reference to this or whatever. But, okay. Else we're good to go. But if we get here, then it's immediately wrong and we're just going to return. Right? Because can't go any further if they didn't enter good age. All right. So now we have age as an int. Let's fill in our dialog. You know, this, not our dialog, but our data. This dot data dot age equals i age this dot you know name equals s name and we're going to hide ourselves and we're going to call the update field whoopsie what's wrong with you oh excuse me this dot data dot name all right so let's hide ourselves this dot set visible false and let's call the update method of the other class, the, uh, the mainframe class. So this dot mainframe dot, what did I call it? Update, update mainframe, right? There we go. So when that button is going to click, if it's good data, it's going to set the data fields it's going to hide that field, that window, and we're going to call it update mainframe. So 
So going back to the mainframe class, we may actually be re ready to run it. I'm going to give it a shot. All right, so get data, right? I'm going to click get data. My name is Joe, but I'm not going to fill in a valid age. Click OK. It yells at me. Age is not a number. Try again. All right. Whatever you say, I'll fill in a valid number. And it comes back here, and it is filled in. So what did it do? When I called OK, it's filled back in the data structure. Now what if we needed the ability to pass in more than one data? Right. What we would do is when we click our button that's supposed to go and get the data, we would create a new data object on the spot. Data D equals new. Or, well, we've already got it, right? But anyways. Like if we needed two fields, data one and data two, right? So data D1, data D2, right? And then so when we click the button and we want to go get the field, the data for data one, right? We could do, you know, D1 equals new data, right? And then we would pass that in dialog.set data d1 or whatever and then later on when we wanted to fill in data d2 with the data then we could do the same thing right create a second one and go the trick is is that well maybe there is no trick why is that underlined by the way I don't know However, since our update method, way up here at the top, is expecting it just to be called from data, then that's really not going to work for us. So I'm going to change it back the way it was. But you can get creative and work around that because, because you're smart. So anyways, data is equal to new data, or you could have set it out there, right? back up here. I guess we've already got a data object, so we don't even need to create a new one. We'll just pass that in. Alright, hope that makes sense.